it's not really that bad of a gamble per se because then your trade just turns into a long-term hold because we know as time goes on, equities will return. Bear gang till I die, ho. Swooped up the homies and we about to start a side show. Two, one, go with God, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. All right, so election week. Generally, historically, markets do well the day, uh, the day or two before and run up to an election. So, that being said, we don't know what's going to happen yet. Why? So, so, all right, look at it this way. Let's talk about gambling, right? This is, this is, the market is calculated gambling if you're, if you're a, a, an active trader, right? Why? Does the market generally go up ahead of election? So, Here's the cool thing about equities, right? Generally speaking, they always go up. Calculated gambling. Welcome, goes and pass to All the right? bear gang. Calculated gambling. What do I mean by this? Okay, marbles. so here's the thing. There's a thing, there's a saying out there that if you try to time the market, if you missed the five biggest green days in a year, that could cost you 50% of your gains for a year. 50% of your gains could be lost out on because you missed just five days in the entire market year, right? Because you have days where you jump 3% and then you flatline for a long time and then jump again. So what happens is, is there's anticipation, right? Stocks have been down. Stocks were down 7% last week. It's been shit since September, right? All the way down. Now, the idea is if the market jumps like crazy after the election, right? You want to be in for that. You've had all this selling happen. You've got two days. Then you've got election night. If the market moons, you want to be in for that. But if the market dumps, it's not really that bad of a gamble per se because then your trade just turns into a long-term hold because we know as time goes on, equities will return. So this is a calculated gamble, right? This is a calculated gamble, and that's why we're probably going to see a green day today. And in my opinion... Depend, barring some outside thing, likely a green day tomorrow too, because everyone's trying to jump in on this dip ahead of the election to try and get into that 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 potential huge upside after the election once there's quote unquote stability. In this case, I don't know what's going to happen because I don't think there is going to be any stability. I think that uh, okay, real quick because I already talked about this in the morning call with the election, guys. Only eight states. Only eight states. And their red-leaning states will have votes counted by 12 p.m. day after election. Right? Now, we know that red, red-leaning red party people are, are, based on polling, are going to be more likely to vote in person. So, day of election and the states that are, are forcing all the counting of ballots to be done by the next day are most likely going to be what we see. But that's what? 15, 20% of the states, you have 40 other states that could take up to a week to count ballots, absentee and mail-in ballots, right? So potentially we could have Trump win on election night and then a week later, Biden is announced the, the, the winner. And if it's not a landslide, then our ass goes to the courts. For those of you boomers like me and you remember Al Gore and George Bush 2000, it could take months. And the person who wins on election night may not be the president of the United States. That's something to understand. And a lot of people will be like, well, look, Trump's the winner or Biden's the winner. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. Okay, this is unprecedented. All right, we've already had 93 million Americans vote early. Okay? I've been bag holding a lot of stuff for a while. My friend is suggesting I sell some stuff at a loss and buy back lower when the market sells off. But I'm hesitant in case there's a big, there's no big sell off. Not sure what to do. What are the chances to see a big percentage drop? They can be. But do you know, uh, Nikki? Are you aware of first in, first out? Like I don't know how how you sell you you are. I'll put it to you this way. This is actually going to be some some shit. Some people might actually need to know before the the market dies in two seconds. Okay. For those of you guys who are looking to sell positions, okay. Here's the thing. You never want to liquidate entirely in case there is no drop, right? But let's say you are of the mindset that there could be a drop and you would like to sell some of your positions. Okay? If you don't have FIFO set up, it's going to be difficult to navigate. And what I mean by this is, if you hold something for less than one year, 
you get hit with what's called short-term capital gains tax. Okay, it's significantly higher than if you hold for over a year, then you get hit with regular capital gains tax. Okay, now, the reason, like, let's say, let's say you bought uh, shares of Amazon two years ago, and you want to sell now. Perfect. But let's say you bought a share of Amazon two years ago, and a share of Amazon nine months ago, or six months ago. Now, this is where your first in, first out is very important. Because the first one in, let's say, you, let's say you have two shares of Amazon. One you got two years ago, one you got six months ago, okay? If you just sell one share right now, you don't know which one's going to get counted if you don't have FIFO set up, right? If it's a two-year one, you pay capital gains tax. If it's a six-months one, you hit the short-term capital gains tax. So that's why if you have FIFO set up, your broker will automatically say the first in is the first out, okay? And this is for tax purposes, Okay, if it's a loss, no, you're not going to get taxed on it. But I'm talking about for if you made gains on it. So if you are looking to scale back on positions and you don't have FIFO set up, look for some of the stocks you've held for over a year and look to liquidate those first. Because here's the problem. If you sell something and you get it with 20% capital gains tax, right? Let's say you made $1,000, you get hit with 20% capital gains tax, right? So you lose $200 and you make $800 profit. If you short-term sell it, and let's say you get hit with 30% or 35%, depending on where you live, well, now you've lost 700 to seven, or now you're at 700 or 650. Why is that important? Well, if the market has a 10% correction, okay, and that's it, and goes back up, you actually lost more money by selling it than you would have holding it through that dip. 37%, yeah, it can go very, it depends on where you live. Okay? Understand what FIFO is, okay? You can have last in, first out, last in, last out, first in, last out, whatever. But generally speaking, you want to have, for most people, a FIFO set up. That means your broker will automatically sell off the first shares you bought as the first ones out. And that's very important for capital gains tax. Okay, very important for capital gains tax. Because if you've bought sporadically over the last two years, you want the ones that are over a year to go out first. You can choose specific lots to sell depending on the brokerage and depending on the, and what, if you know what you're doing. This just automatically does it for you. Okay? There's a lot of things here. I mean, there's, there's, there's last in, first out, first in, first out. There's other things that are, in fact, I'm just trying to make this very simple, okay? For those of you guys who are saying, hey, this election scares me. I, wanna, I don't want to liquidate everything. I want to sell some of my portfolio. Stocky, what's the best way to do it? Well, obviously, you're going to want to get hit with the ones that are over a year before the ones under a year because that way, if you have gains, you're taxed significantly less. First in, first out. Okay, because because you don't want to completely liquidate because if it's under a year and you get hit with 37 percent and the market only drops 10 percent, you actually lost more money than if you would have just held through. But if you have stuff from over a year, get those out, hit the capital gains tax on the short side, take your profit, wait for the bottom and buy back in again. Okay, does everybody does everybody understand what I mean by that? Okay, so first in, first out. Okay, under a year versus over a year, how to scale back your portfolio and make sales on positions, okay? If you don't have it, you know, and you have specific stocks, you can buy it depending on your brokerage. Either you set up FIFO, you sell the lots, you just buy the one, you sell the ones that you had before, okay? Some, some brokerages have it automatically, some you have to set up. When I set up TD, I just clicked on FIFO, there's always. Okay? Now, a lot of people have been asking me, well, Stocky, if, if Biden wins and he raises capital gains tax, would we see liquidation by the end of the year? Potentially. But I think most institutions either A, are already out or the ones that are holding through know that that's not going to be as significant as most people are, are, are hitting the news cycle with. Short-term capital gains tax is ordinary income. Where do you get 37%? I was talking about depending on your tax bracket and how much money you've made. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're in for a dollar... Okay, and you and you sell it. It could be like nine percent. I'm talking about. I'm I'm giving it as as high as okay, as high as so that somebody doesn't go. Well, Stocky said it's only twelve percent. Fuck it, I'm selling it all right now. And then they come back. Stocky, I got hit with thirty six percent or thirty three percent. Fuck you. 
I have to I have to always give worst case scenario just to make sure I encompass like a big net over everybody. Can't gold be manipulated? It can, but the thing with gold, and this is why I like gold as a hedge. Remember, we've been talking about for about three weeks now. Gold futures into December have been exploding. Now, what is a future versus current price? Future is people's expectations. People think that gold is going to be significantly higher in December. Why is that? Real simple. Okay, and remember, futures are future expectations, not current value, right? So a gold future is basically somebody saying, I think gold is going to be higher uh, at X amount of dollars in the future. And if people, if more people believe that that is correct, then the value of those contracts goes up. Now, why are people thinking gold is going to go well in December? Because the market, okay, is pricing in a Biden win based on polling and, and the fact that even if Trump is, 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 is called the nominee tomorrow, Biden might be the president, you know, three weeks later when all the votes are counted. So if Biden becomes president, market, right? Pricing in Biden, President D, House D, potentially Senate D, okay? If that were to happen, the chances of a stimulus bill, okay, that is super ex exceeding ungodly amounts of money, talking about three trillion plus, okay, which would be a disaster in the long term for, for the economy, at least based on economy now. What does that mean? Potentially, based on how inflation, core inflation works, $3 trillion injected into the consumer basis. Everyone has more money. The value of that money now goes down. And what is a hedge against currency? Gold and now crypto. Okay? GLD is the gold ETF. Uh, if you're looking for current pricing, futures contracts are different. Why not silver? Silver, silver it has too much volatility to really be tied to it as much.